So if there are no further questions, let's thank Ayan once more. Very nice. So our next speaker is uh, uh, last last talk of the session is uh, by Sabdesachi Malik. Hello. Yeah. Speak about entanglement entropy and the first law at third order for boosted black brains. Yeah, it's visible. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, so hello and good afternoon once again. Uh, my talk is based on a paper from last year with Dr. Harvendra Singh, and it is on entanglement entropy and the first law at third order for boosted black brains. So by now it is well established in the ADS-CFT community that the entanglement entropy associated with any subregion in the boundary conformal field theory uh, is related to the area of an extremal co-dimension two homologous surface in the bulk gravitational space-time. In a series of works, it was shown that the perturbative change in entanglement entropy between empty ADS and any perturbed asymptotically ADS geometry admits a relationship which is similar to the first law of thermodynamics. This relationship is usually expressed in the form of equation two, at delta E on the right hand side denotes the change in energy of the subregion and the quantity T is called the entanglement temperature, which for asymptotically ADS geometries uh, depends on the inverse of the characteristic length of the subregion. It is also expected that in presence of other conserved charges in the theory, the first law will include their contributions. The goal of our present work was twofold. We wanted to do an explicit computation of holographic entanglement entropy in the presence of a chemical potential like term. And we also wanted to work out a possible first law like relationship, which includes contribution beyond leading order in the perturbation theory. The holographic calculations were performed using a boosted ADS black hole space time. The boost was applied in the y direction, and the same is considered to be compactified over a circle of radius ry. So that if we perform a Kaluza Klein reduction and come to lower dimensions, we would perceive a Kaluza Klein gauge field, which is denoted by omega. For the holographic entanglement entropy calculation, we chose a subregion in the shape of a strip. The strip width is along x1 direction and is denoted by curly L. The other directions are unconstrained, but we put a large cutoff, capital L, to avoid any divergence. To find out the entanglement entropy, we need to calculate the area of an extremal surface, which is usually done by solving an area integral. Unfortunately, this integral cannot be solved analytically for any general space-time dimension. So we make some approximations. We consider that the width of our subregion, curly L, is very small compared to the black hole horizon parameter so that we can expand our area integral and any related quantities in this dimensionless ratio L over ZH and express the area as a perturbation series. And in the work, we worked up up to third order in the perturbation series. So in this figure, I have uh, plotted the difference in area with respect to ADS ground state against the width of the strip and try to show the effect of including higher order corrections. The purple curve at the top is the area uh, difference at leading order. The second order correction to it is negative, so the area decreases by some amount but the third order is positive, so it increases by a small margin. Uh, and I have tried to compare with it with some numerical results, and for small enough lengths, uh, there is pretty good match. Right, so once we find out the area, we can calculate the entanglement entropy. To write out the first law, we need another ingredient, which is the stress energy tensor. And this is usually calculated by doing a Pfeffermann Graham expansion of the asymptotically ADS geometry. Uh, this expansion 
gives us the following expressions for the conserved charges, which are the energy, uh, the pressure in the direction orthogonal to the boost, and the boost momentum, which is quantized. Using these expressions, it is uh, very easy to show that at the leading order, the entanglement entropy trivially satisfies a first law like relationship. Here, delta denotes generic variation with respect to the two parameters of our theory, which are the black hole horizon parameter and the boost. Uh, the quantity beta E1 is the inverse of the entanglement temperature. And uh, as expected, e beta is proportional to L. Uh, however, we note that at the leading order, there is no contribution from the chemical potential conjugate to the boost momentum. Why is it so? So we define our chemical potential as the value of the kaluza klein gauge field evaluated at the turning point of the extremal surface. And at the leading order, this quantity is actually of the order one over ZH to the power D. So a term like mu delta in is of the order one over ZH to the power 2D, and it cannot contribute at the leading order. Nevertheless, its contribution should not be ignored at higher orders. So to write down a first law-like relationship, including the higher order corrections, we first propose that an equation of the form of equation 10 be satisfied. Here, alpha and zeta are some undetermined coefficients. To determine them, we uh, perform variations on both sides with respect to the two parameters, zh and beta gamma squared equals k, and then compare their coefficients. By com okay. Uh, so after the comparison, we can express alpha and zeta in the form of some power series. And we note that at the leading order, alpha is actually equal to the inverse of entanglement temperature we found previously. Therefore, we find that it is appropriate to define alpha as the new inverse entanglement temperature at second order. And we also redefine our chemical potential in this manner. Doing so, we find that the variation of entanglement entropy can actually be expressed in the canonical first law form with the redefined entanglement temperature and chemical potential. Actually, this algorithm works for all higher orders. So at third order, we can again start with a relationship of this kind and find out some redefined entanglement temperature and chemical potential for this order using the similar procedure I talked about. And then we can show that the first law is satisfied. Uh, in this figure, I have plotted the entanglement temperature and its dependence on the subsystem length for ADS4 and ADS5 and try to reflect on the effect of corrections. Uh, so if we consider the bare entanglement temperature, which is given by the red line, it is simply inversely proportional to L. But uh, at the next higher order, the uh, corrections are positive, so it increases by some amount. And uh, at third order, the corrections would be negative, so again it decreases. So we again uh, notice the same change in sign at every order that we noticed for, the, for example, the extremal area calculations. And this possibly hints at uh, some kind of convergence of a series. And actually, we expect that if this series could be resummed, then the entanglement temperature for large subsystem length would actually approach the temperature of the black hole. Uh, that was the main results of the work. We also did some calcul similar calculations for other geometries, which include the generic black DP brain, where the results can be found by doing a simple substitution. And we also considered the ADS plane wave geometry, uh, which is a zero, zero temperature background. And we uh, showed that similar results also hold there as well.
to summarize, we worked out some explicit examples and put forward a proposal for writing out the first law of entanglement thermodynamics at any order in the perturbation series. And we found that in order to do that, we need to appropriately quote unquote renormalize the entanglement temperature and chemical potential at each order. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Questions, please. So uh, I had a question. You had a plot of area versus L, right? Yes. Yeah. So why is there a mismatch at higher orders in L? I mean, for large L. Uh, so the mismatch with the numerical. Yeah. Numerical. Yes, because we are using a perturbation series approximation to calculate this area. This is not an exact calculation. So it is only valid uh, for very small subsystem lengths. Yeah, there is a question from TIFR. Hi, a uh, quick question. Uh, so in the usual first law of entanglement, it's the modular energy which shows up on the right hand side. So yes. in this case, I, if I understand correctly, your energy is like the total global energy or, or was it was it the modular energy? Or if you have any comment in, on that. Okay, um, so we are uh, using a strip subsystem for which I don't think an expression for the modular Hamiltonian is known. So this energy is actually uh, the energy difference between the ADS ground state and this perturbed geometry. I see. So it's the total energy, not the yes. modular. Okay. Mm -hmm. But because you're working in the small strip limit, maybe, maybe, you know, the, the two are related. Yes. Maybe the two are related. Um, actually, if we consider a spherical subsystem, it has been shown that uh, the modular Hamiltonian can be expressed as an integral over these stress energy tensor components. Um, but for the uh, strip subregion, such a relationship uh, doesn't exist. So I cannot match them exactly. Thank you. Thank you. 